my god. Yo. This is crazy. What the hell? Wow, that's really small. Oh my god, this is insane. Several months ago, I posted a video titled, I made a MIDI machine in Minecraft, in which I showcased a simple one octave MIDI-like machine and played a simple song on it. I was pretty proud of it, and people seemed to like it. And I just moved on to the next video. Huh. Well, all right, Mooncatcher. Let's see what you got. Needless to say, we hopped on a call and he showed me his design. Pretty cool stuff. But then he had another idea. You know how in 1.19.4, jukeboxes will be able to interact with hoppers? Right. And jukeboxes already output a different signal based on the disk inside. Yes. What if we use this new mechanic to create a more compact music player? Interesting. You want to work on this together? Sure, why not? I had no idea what I just signed up for. Oh, oh my, how horrible was that? Oh my god. Oh my god, bro. Hold on. No, dude. Why? Oh. I don't understand. I forgot to tell you, I'm running this on a quantum computer. So where do we even begin? Well first, what is this new jukebox tech? To be clear, jukeboxes were already able to output a signal strength based on the disc inside of it, but inserting and removing the discs had to be done manually. Until now. Starting in 1.19.4, hoppers are able to both insert and remove discs from jukeboxes. This means that if we feed a stream of discs through a jukebox and capture the signal strength of each disc, we can read it as if it was a stream of data. And what's better? Each of these bits of data can have one of 15 different states, making the data very detailed. Couple that with the power of shulker boxes, and now you can store an ordered list of 27 bits of information in just one inventory slot. And then put those into a double chest, and you have an insane 1,458 ordered bits of information in just one inventory. See where I'm going with this? So, in order to encode a song, we need a way to represent notes and rests. For rests, that's easy. We just use any non-stackable item that can't be inserted into a jukebox. We decided on shuffles for that. For notes, that's a bit more involved. So there's 15 different music discs that output a signal strength of 1 through 15. So if we assign notes to each disc, we can encode a specific order of notes inside of a shulker box. But there's one problem with that. The note block only has two octaves of range, for a total of 25 notes. 15's not gonna cut it. Unless, of course, we split the range in half and build two machines, one for the lower octave and one for the upper octave. That way, we can use only the 12 farmable discs to make this at least somewhat survival friendly. And also pig step for the highest F sharp, but we don't mention that one. So with this amazing plan, all we need is two jukeboxes to cover the full range of one instrument. Or do we? You see, there's one fatal flaw with this approach. Hoppers are painfully slow. They transfer items once every four redstone ticks, or 0.4 seconds. And though this may be fast enough for your storage system, it sounds like this when you try to play a song. Yeah, that was Megalovania, if you couldn't tell. We can't build this amazing machine only to be stuck with that. So is there a way to speed this up? Well, yes there is. Enter the Hopper Minecart. This baby can transfer items so fast. Once every game tick, to be exact. That's four times faster than a regular hopper. So what we can do is place a Hopper Minecart right under our input chest and then split the stream into two separate hopper lines offset by two redstone ticks to achieve maximum overdrive. I mean, double hopper speed. And now, Megalovania sounds like this. It's still kinda slow, but literally twice as fast. It'll do. So now we build that mechanism, attach a red coder to decode the current disk, and it doesn't work. It turns out that this redstone line blinks too fast for our traditional red coder design. 
Basically, if a torch blinks too fast for too long, it burns out. So now what? I guess we have to design a brand new red coder that can handle fast pulses without torches. That can't be too hard, right? Right? Well, it works. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but it's, it's huge. <laughs> yeah. There's got to be a way to make it smaller. I mean, that'd be nice. After all, who wants each octave of each instrument to look like friggin' stadium seating? Such a giant thing sticking out of our module really takes away from the magic of it all. And not to mention that it wouldn't allow you to be in hearing range of a lot of instruments. Evidently, it bothered Mooncatcher too, because just a couple days later, I received this. My word, he's done it. Now we're able to play a song. But you see, this is only half the magic. I mean, you don't play a CD only to just throw it away after, right? I mean, you want to get it back. So how do we return the song back to the player? Well, we simply merge the two hopper lines into the same dropper, and then use a two-tick clock to insert the items back into the shulkers at double hopper speed. It's quite simple, really. It really wasn't, but I won't bore you with the details. So with the song successfully packed into shulker boxes, and our egos sufficiently inflated, we were done. We finally had a machine to play back a full-length encoded song, and even pack it all back into shulker boxes afterwards. So what's next? I am so glad you asked. Paste the machine all around a central location, hook them up with Instant Line, and play a song, of course. Let's listen to our masterpiece. Alright, hit it. Let's go. Okay. Oh. Um, oh, my computer is not liking this. Wait, <laughs> what? Oh no. Dude, I, I think I found it. Take a look at this. What's happening? Oh. Oh god, that's, that's really not good. Nothing is as easy as it seems. You see, we thought we had created the perfect machine, but Minecraft had other plans. Y'all ever heard of locationality? It's a word that can make any redstoner shudder. If you've dealt with it, you know the nightmare never ends. My condolences for your quality of sleep. But for those of you who aren't aware, let me introduce you. Locationality is basically when the same contraption or components behave differently based on where they are located in the world. Yes, this is a real thing. This can affect basically any redstone component, but none is more vulnerable than the hopper. Did I say vulnerable? I meant buggy. You see, hoppers are supposed to transfer items on a global clock, and in some locations, they do. But in others, they just don't. This makes anything involving item transfer with precise timings an absolute headache to work with. And guess what? That's exactly what we're doing here. But we can fix it. It's what we do. We always fix it. Debugging, whether we like it or not, is a central part of the redstone process. Often, when we're working with anything complex, this is the part that takes up the most time. No, dude. Oh, no. No, it's not working. It's not working. There's no, sh there's no shulker box. It's not glamorous, and it's full of ups and downs. But we persevere. Oh, okay. No. No, that doesn't sound good. You can feel like you're stuck in a never-ending cycle, but we press on. Yeah, no, that's wrong. It doesn't work. No. Yeah, dude, this is this is not gonna work. Yeah. But sometimes, even when you've done all of that, there's no guarantee that you'll achieve the perfection that you're after. And as the months pass and you run out of ideas, reality is there, waiting. Is there anything else we can do? No. No, I don't think so. But at this point, we were five months into this project, 
and we wouldn't give up that easily. So we landed on an iteration that is good enough and decided to ship it anyway, the true engineer's way. Let's try this again. You ready? Yep. All right, let's go. Dude. I think, is it? It's working. Yes. It's totally working. Yes. Let's go. Woohoo. <laughs> Let's go. All right, let's show this thing off, shall we? But not at this state. So Mooncatcher got busy with the beautiful decorations while I worked on a script to convert MBS songs into a schematic that we can easily paste into our machine. Shout out to the OpenMBS team for creating a Python library to parse MBS songs, and shout out to fellow creator Sloyme for creating the MC schematic Python library. Couldn't have done it without you. This code is available on GitHub, by the way, so you can try it out. Just be aware that it's not all that professional. I mean, I threw most of this together on a plane. So, with the decorations finished and several songs locked and loaded, it's time to flex on some YouTubers. Let's go. Wait, what is this? <laughs> Wait, September or something? That's right. Mm -hmm. Ho ho ho! Yeah! Now that's the jazzy thing I want to see, you know? Is this like fully encodable? Can you put like anything into this? Oh yeah. Oh my god. Oh shoot, wait, the piano takes up more than one wall. Okay, this has to be like a MIDI converter or something. This is a brilliantly planned project. You knew exactly how this was going to look in the end and brilliantly executed. <laughs> so cool. Who needs to make no block songs anymore when you have this thing? This is one of the coolest machines that I've ever seen in my entire life. We do want to show you one more song, though. Oh, I'm so going to get Rickrolled. That's exactly what's going to happen right now. Ready? Yes. No, wait, wait, hold on. Oh, um. No, I f knew it. No. <laughs> this is a fantastic second song. Bro, 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 <laughs> bro, bro, <laughs> no. 